Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we'll go over the progress we made on our new golf game. We'll be guiding you through the development process of making more tiles and some obstacles. Let's add more tiles to our sprite sheet. Behind the scenes, we've added a new animated golf hole and flag tile. This is something we already had in our Rust version of the game. It has its own A sprite file where it's animated as you can see here. In another video, we'll show how it's implemented in the game. Now let's make sure that we have enough tiles for a minimal 3x3 tile map. Let's use the water tiles as an example. I'll copy the water tiles that we have and create a new document that's 320x320. Turn on the grid and set the grid size to 32x32 32 32, since that's the size of our tiles. I'm going to paste 3 copies of our pond and try to connect them. You can see I can copy bits of the pond and make it seamless. However, there's an issue when connecting the top and bottom pond because we don't have a corner tile. There's just one pixel that doesn't have a dark outline so it's a bit hard to see. The reason for it just being a small difference is that the outline is just a pixel or two away from the edge. A bit later you'll see a better example when I do the floating island tiles. To fix this problem, we create a plus shape with the tiles we have and fix the corners. Copy, paste, flip our tiles and if they still look a bit off, fix them to your liking. I'm happy how this looks like. To make sure it looks good in the game, I'm going to fill the background with the green color we use for the grass. Okay, let's copy this and go back to our sprite sheet. We're going to add more tiles, so let's extend the sheet so that we have 3 more empty rows. And paste them somewhere not too far from the pond tiles, so that they're all together. In the previous video, we've mentioned that we're going to add some sand tiles that will slow down the ball. You'll now witness an awesome life hack on saving time. We're going to recolor the water tiles to yellow to make sand tiles. Let's go back to our water plus canvas and bring back the background. Select the foreground color and change the hue to a yellowish color. Play around with the sliders until you find the color that you like. Here's an example of a bad choice. This is too dark. I think we're going to make it bright yellow, something like this. Let's recolor the edges too. For this we cannot use the bucket tool. We can, but it will take forever. Instead, we're going to select the color that we want to replace as our foreground color and the color that we want to replace it with as our background color. You can see that here. If you've done it the wrong way, you can just press X to swap them. Go to edit and press replace color. Or just remember the shortcut since you'll be using it a lot. You can make some last second adjustments if you want and press OK. That saves us a lot of time. Now we will quickly do the last bit. And this pawn right here. Alright, let's put this into our sprite sheet. Right, now for the island corners. You can see unlike the pond tiles, the island tiles are away from the tile edge. Let's take it over to the large canvas and we can delete all of this. Place a copy in the corner here so that I have easy access to its tiles. Now we add the ends to a plus shape. I'm going to make the top corners first since they're easier. So we want to connect these two tiles. Copy both outline colors and try to connect them using the rocky pattern they have. We copy, paste and flip this tile for the top right corner. Unfortunately, we cannot use them for the bottom tiles. Still having the same color selected, we connect them the best we can. This time we need to add the bottom part, so copy its colors and follow the pattern. Paste this to the bottom right corner and fill the middle. We now have our floating plus shaped island. And now when we put this in our sprite sheet, you can see these are different tiles. Now we have some empty space here. I'll just quickly make some sand, water and rock variations here to fill up the space. Not sure if they'll be used, but I'd like to have the sprite sheet filled out. Now, let's create a moving block. This will have its own sprite sheet consisting of only one frame. Before we make a new tile, we'll copy this tile here for the block base. Create a new file, paste the copy tile and mirror it. Remove the corner's green pixels since it won't move only on grass. Let's make all four sides equal to make it look nicer. Lastly, give it a fill color in the middle and some details. Okay, now let's make a windmill. Let's extend the sheet with another 3 empty rows and create a 96 by 96 canvas. In our last episode, we mentioned the ball is 6 by 6 pixels, so let's add that. The reason for that is because we want to make a windmill with a door where the ball can go through. We create a new layer and start drawing the door. With that done, we create the rest of the building. We're not focused on making it look nice for now. Okay, let's add the blades. We'll draw it on the top half of the canvas since we're going to duplicate on all four sides. Let's give it a spin. Yeah, that looks fine. Let's put the building in the main sprite sheet. The blades will be exported and animated separately. Now let's give the blades a brown color and export a single blade. This will be using Godot. 
More on that in another video. Let's go to Godot and refresh our tile sheet so the Godot automatically creates new tiles from our new tile sheet. Before we start creating maps, let's make some patterns from our test map. This will speed up the map building process. I'm going to select each corner, copy, and paste it down here. I will also do that for the map edges. Now I'm going to duplicate the test map and call it template. Delete the island so that we only have the background present. We'll leave the ball on the scene but hide it. Alright, the first map. We duplicate the template map and call it map1. This will be a very simple map. It will just be a long straight line between the ball and the hole. You can see by using patterns we've made, making maps goes much faster. We'll put the hole on the right side of the map. For now, the hole does nothing. This is just to test that the ball can reach the hole. Unhide the ball and place it on the left side of the map. And let's test it out. It seems we can't reach the hole in a single turn. Let's fix this by decreasing the ball's mass to 0.4. Yeah, that's a hole in one. Okay, let's make another one. Duplicate our template map and call it map 2. Again, we start laying down tiles by using our patterns. For this map, I want to encourage the player to bounce the ball off the walls. So if you want to get a hole in one, you must use this game mechanic. Let's adjust the ball's mass again and test the map out. Yup. Okay, one more map. Duplicate the template and call it map 3. In this map, we're going to introduce the water tiles. Right now, the water tiles don't do anything, but they will remove your ball and place it at the start. If you look at the map, you can see there's a possibility to bounce your ball off the walls and get hole in one. But if you don't want to risk losing your ball, I think you can reach the hole in two or three moves. Let's see if we can get a hole in one on this map. Almost touched the pond, but it's possible. That's it for this update. In the next video, we'll be adding behaviors to our new tiles and obstacles. If you want to keep up with development, go ahead and subscribe. You can also check out the link playlist in the description for the whole series. Or even follow us on our various social media platforms, shown on the screen now. See you next time.